Hello everyone, Jeff with The Green Review here. Let's talk about plant names. People like to name things because that's one of the ways we communicate with each other about our surroundings. It's important that we use a name that we can all understand that will identify the same plant every time it's used. Common names are used locally by people and can be very confusing. The more geographically widespread a plant is, covering more languages, the more names the plant will have. According to Michael Durr in his Manual for Woody Landscape Plants, the European white water lily has 15 English common names, 44 French, 105 German, and 81 Dutch for a total of 245 names in just those languages. In this same region, the word lily can be applied to different kinds of plants, such as the Easter lily and the lily of the valley. In the past, Latin terms to identify plant parts were added up to identify the plant. Thus, the Nanos borealis echinatus veridus maculatus, Cristatus folium, Arius striatus, Astron aquaticus lilium, would have been the dwarf, northern, spiny, green spotted, crested leafed, gold striped star aquatic lily. Obviously, this technique was a bit cumbersome. In 1753, Carl von Linné published Species Plantarum to begin the binomial system, which means the plant's names have two parts. The first part is the genus, and the second part is the specific epithet. The plant's species name is both parts, not just the specific epithet. The Latin name, or in our case, the botanical name, is sometimes called a scientific name. The names can be Latin words describing the plant, or they can be names of people. Rosa rugosa and Rosa multiflora are both species names of roses. Rosa is the genus. Rugosa and multiflora are both specific epithets. A plant family is a single or group of genera that botanists feel are similar enough to be closely related. Very often, the Latin family name ends in the letters A-C-E-A-E, -E, such as Liliaceae for the lily family and Rosaceae for the roses. A genus is a single or group of plants that botanists feel are similar enough to be closely related. The species grouped within the genus are supposed to be more similar to each other than species in another genus. Similarity in the reproductive parts in flowers and fruits, and then the buds, leaves, stems, and roots, in no particular order, are used to determine species relationships. Recently, genetic chromosome investigations have been used to try to sort through the relationships, with the result of many species being moved into a different genus. The plural of genus is genera. A species is an ideal, not a thing. It is a group of individuals that have identifiable, inheritable characteristics, and in the wild, the group can, can continue from generation to generation. All of the identifiable characteristics can vary in degree and do not have to be visible. Disease resistance, hardiness, and taste, for example, aren't visible. A variety is a sublevel of a species that displays distinctly different, identifiable, inheritable characteristics, and in the wild, the group can continue from generation to generation. There can be several natural occurring varieties for a species. A cultivated variety, or cultivar, is this sublevel of a species that displays distinctly different, identifiable, possibly inheritable characteristics. When found in the wild, the group may or may not continue from generation to generation. There are often thousands of cultivars for popular flower, vegetable, and tree species. The genus is always capitalized and specific epithet is never capitalized. They're both either underlined or italicized. A variety name is not capitalized and may or may not have the letters V-A-R ahead of the variety portion of the name. The cultivar name is in single quotes and each word of the name is capitalized. 
After January 1st of 1959, the cultivar names cannot be in Latin to distinguish them from the genus and species. It can be used by everyone to designate that plant. An X is often used to indicate a hybrid. A hybrid is a sexual cross between two species that may or may not be in the same genus. Because people have limited ideas of genus and species, we often find to our surprise that species from different genera can create hybrids. In some highly cultivated plants such as daylilies, the Hemerocallus genus, with over 60,000 named cultivars, the genus may be abbreviated to a single letter and the species name may be dropped, as in H. Red Volunteer, the 2005 All-America Award winner. If older parentage is known, they can be listed in a hybrid's name. For example, H. Roses and Gold is the offspring of Lake Effect B and crossed with Be Thine, which together was crossed with Songwriter. Very often the group of individuals that make up a species are geographically isolated from other similar species. Essentially, they're inbred to each other. When allowed to interbreed with other species from other nearby regions, the offspring may exhibit what is called hybrid vigor. The F1 hybrid is created from two purebred lines of parents that have been chosen and inbred for several generations. The F1 hybrid should have the best characteristics of both parents. Crossing two F1 Parents can create an F2 hybrid, but sometimes F1 hybrids are sterile. So what's this mean to me? If you desire a specific plant characteristic, such as leaf color, fall color, flower color, fruit size or taste, and hardiness, disease resistance, etc., it is important to determine if there is a specific cultivar that's best. Then buy the plant when it exhibits the characteristic. Buy a tree in the fall if fall color is important, or in the spring if flowers are important. Another what's this mean to me? In our gardens, it can be useful to know which plant family a species belongs to. Plants in the same family are often affected with the same insects and diseases. Apples, cotoneaster, hawthorn, mountain ash, peaches, pears, fetinia, Potentilla, pyracantha, raspberry, serviceberry, spirea, and strawberry, to name just a few, are all in the rose family. And they can be susceptible to the same bacterial diseases such as fire blight. Planting too many plants from the same family can result in more landscape maintenance to keep them healthy. A bonus, what's this mean to me? Even if you only call plants by a common name, it's wise to know where to find the botanical name for your plants. That way you can be sure of purchasing the correct species and cultivar you want and then caring for it properly. Knowing you have the right plant will help you decide where the best location is to grow it. And this is Jeff with the Green Review. Thanks for watching.